G'day YouTube, my name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well, this little video, or today's video, is going to be about stripping a gearbox on a Chamberlain 9G tractor. Now, this is my friend's tractor, the old Malteser from Malta, and um, he's using it as a trekking tractor for running around the highways and that. And he's doing up a, um, a 9G, a bit of a rat rod looking thing it is. and um, that's how he's going to go with it, have a, how he's doing it. So this is the gearbox out of the tractor and this one jumps out of reverse gear. And so we have another housing here he likes, it's got a nice a nice Chamberlain emblem on the side of it. So we're going to strip this gearbox on camera. He's had, he has another two gearboxes that he's already stripped but just for the sake of the video I've asked could I do this one for camera just to um, show the process of pulling it apart and once we start going back together we'll be picking the best parts out of the three gearboxes putting new bearings new seals and all that in but the um the difference on this tractor is there's no pdo on the back anymore there's no hydraulics it didn't have a hitch his and there's no pdo um and he's building a box there for doing road runs and, and going camping and, and um, just socialising as we do with these Chamberlains. People choose the 9G Chamberlain as a road tractor. It's got front suspension. It has a leaf spring at the front and they have a good road speed. Standard road speed should be around 48 kilometres per hour, um, which is quite fast when you think of a, um, a Massey Ferguson 135 multi-power or 35 multi-power with um, big tyres should do about 36 kilometres an hour and um, my grey and gold Ferguson behind us there the petrol it does around 25 mile or 25 k's so um, yeah it's 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 a fast road tractor they've got a big wide seat in them and they yeah, yeah they're, they're just a comfy thing to cruise around in and, and um, I don't have one myself because I've, it's too heavy for me to get around. I like the stuff that I can tow behind my ute nowadays. I don't want another truck or anything like that. So follow along. We'll just pop this apart and it's a, it's, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to leave the whole PDO train out. Now on the front of the gearbox here, you can just see that. Oh, that's heavy. You can just see this PDO shaft here. All that's going out. There's an extra set of gears in the back here that we're going to leave out and where the PDO drive shaft comes out the back we have a blanking plate for that. So, and like you said, there's no use buying all the bearings and all that for something that's just going to sit there and rattle along and make a noise because you're not using it. So, um, this is going to be a one-off gearbox with no PDO in it at all. When we pull this shaft out the front here, we were looking at putting a Welsh plug in there. Um, we've been having trouble finding one the exact size we need so I'd say what I'll do is we'll go up to the lathe and we'll machine a plug with a couple of o-rings on it and that'll stay put in there. Um, they were only a single stage clutch tractor and this main PDO drove off a, a dog or a female spline on the back of the crankshaft of, of the tractor so um, we can actually leave that off we can just put the flywheel on and it'll, it'll be a good job. So. Follow along, first up, there's this housing on the side here. Oh boy. And this housing here, um, we'll take that off. That's your um, transmission brake. Um, when, when you work the clutch of the tractor, this actually pulls on the brake to um, slow it up. So when you first start the tractor from a standing start and you want to get it into gear, you put your foot way down on the clutch pedal as far as it will go. This clutch brake or transmission brake engages onto the um, lay shaft here and um, slows the transmission down because they're all straight cut gears and that so it slows the transmission down to get it into gear. Then when you drive along the road you just depress the clutch halfway to change gears between them and you don't engage this brake at all so there's plenty of adjustment on here but we've made a bracket to go on the engine turning stand and we undo these four bolts here, we take this out of the way and our bracket will go there and that way we can turn the gearbox up and down and all around for filming so you can get a good idea of, um, of what's in there. So 
we'll break away now. I'll take this off and I'll put the in. I'll put the transmission on the stand we've made on our rotating stand, and when we come back, we'll be all ready to have a good look. Okay, the gearbox is in the stand here, and we now have the luxury of being able to turn the handle and, and wind it back and forth. So, as I said before, this box, it was jumping out of reverse gear. So, our first cab off the rank, I suppose, is to have a look at that while we're going. But this, um, I'll just get rid of this for the moment. Now, this is where I lift them from. And all I've done here, I've made a, I've got a stainless steel eye. That's a, I think that it would be inch BSP fitting with a stainless steel bolt going up underneath and that way we can lift the box and turn it around. And I did always mean to make a better one of them, but <laughs> you know how something works, so you just keep using it. So first up, we'll pop this gear stick out and get that out of the way. So look, just about everything is 916 <laughs> on these, um, so a 916 long socket and we'll just rattle that away. Someone's had that off as there's a no, um, no split washer under there. And we could have cleaned it too but we're not that worried about that, we're not using this housing, we're just popping this one apart to grab the good bits out of it. So that can come off. While we're having a look at that, we just have a look at the end of the gear stick here. Make sure that's not overly rounded, overly worn at all. And yeah, look, that, that does look pretty good. There's not a lot of movement there. That may well be worth using. There's a bit of a bit of a dint in the tin shield here. But anyway, we'll pick the best of them. Now these two bolts at the top here, they're the detents for the selector rails and um, it probably doesn't really matter when we loosen them up but for the moment we'll just rattle this side plate off and I might drop the camera down and we'll rattle the side plate off and see what we can see inside. Right, we have the camera positioned down the side here now so we'll just rattle this side cover off um, the bung's loose on the bottom, so I'm pretty sure he's dropped the oil out. And one bolt to go. That's been glued on. Hang on a sec, I'll go and get something to deal with that. Okay, I've got them. I've just set a bolt back in there and I'll... I've got an alloy punch onto that and I don't know what they glued that with, but it glued well. Looks like a silicon based product. That's the inside of the plate. We got a bit of bit of milk in here. Just have a quick look at the gears as they run around there. Look, they're looking okay. Doesn't look too bad. A slight little mark on the back here from probably crunching it in. I'll loosen these detents off and we should be able to move the selectors back and forth easily. It just takes the load off the detents for us, off the rails. So 
a little bit of moisture on the end of those plugs. They've got a little rusty tinge to them. And you can see these little plungers. The little plungers here, they sit in these grooves here and that holds it either in or out of gear. So as we pull the gear stick across and up, that fellow would engage. So, and this fellow across this way, that would be second and third on the other shaft. But we'll have to get this shaft back to neutral first before that other one wants to move. Anyway, we'll continue on, we'll come around the back, we'll pop this back housing off and that'll give us access to some okay, more Okay, we're stuff. at the back of the box now and this is the main drive shaft, this is the PDO shaft here and we have bearing supports all through the back. So this seal often leaks. A lot of these chamberlains actually have a collar there to keep the grass and that away from the seal. Um, we're not going to put that on. There's no need for us to use that anymore. Um, the top shaft and all that can be shimmed. This is yeah, you have a shaft coming from your PDO, and it drives down a little drive train down through here. And I'll just show you what we're planning on. At least um, this plate at the top here is the same bolt pattern and all as this plate here with the PDO. And so we're going to pull this out, pull this plate off, pull the guts out and we're going to replace this plate with one of these plates there and that'll seal that up but look just to start the job off we'll just rattle everything loose, oh we got half inch there not um, 9 sixteenth Six of those should be six of those. And we can take those off. Well, they've used some good glue on here. Looks like a white silicon. And we have a bearing there. Look at the rubbish in here. That's the... That's a bit of a PDO drive shaft. And this one here we should be able to pop off also. And that's your PDO seal. That's in nice and crooked, you can see. You can see it sitting way up on this edge. And, but they've put two seals in there, so it looks even on the outside, but when we have a look on the inside, it's not. So look, that's not a worry. We don't have to be concerned about that. This, this plate here will end up down there. And we'll put our 916 socket back on. And we'll just run around all these bolts to hold the main back cover on here.
those of you who have had anything to do with 85 140 gear oil you'll know what this, you'll know what this smells like it's not a not all that pleasant of oil but anyway that's just the oil it's nothing to And no doubt we'll have to give this a hit too. We'll come around the back and get a punch. spilling out but we have a couple of dowels. We have a dowel here and a dowel down below. So pop a bit of rag over there. Another dowel down the bottom there, we need to, it feels like we should be off there. There we go, back plate off. Okay, now this is, this is where our shaft comes out, this is our lay shaft. Then the main drive comes in through here. Then this shaft here, you can see there, that's your main PDO shaft. That's a little shaft out the front. So what we should be able to do is we can remove this gear. We don't need it. We can remove this gear. We don't need it. We can remove this little drive train here. We don't need it. So um, the they're helical gears, but they'll just be running around doing nothing. So um, when Paul and myself had a chat about doing this, um, yeah, we decided why put new bearings there when we don't need to. These tractors are never going to be PDO tractors ever again. Um, this is the back of your reverse idler in through here. So we'll just pop along and, and pull this out. Looks like this has had a bit of a bashing around, but We'll just see, we'll slowly, slowly work on this bit. Um, that shaft will come out of the way. Now, hang on a second. There it is. <laughs> Look at that bloody camera there. So now the PDO's gone, this is just the outside drive shaft. Um, we have to remove this eye the gear to give us clearance for that bearing. again We'll be able to undo this fellow here. Now 
and they're tapered roller bearings so they have the proper little spacer inside but this is the back of the reverse idler there's a bolt in through, coming through the side there that's holding that in you don't need that anymore and this shaft here we don't need that either God, look at the grind marks on there that's had chisel marks and grind marks. <laughs> I have no idea what went on there. But yeah, surplus to requirements. Someone else might be able to use that. Now when the box goes together, this shaft will be sitting out. But there'll be nothing on it like it is there now. So, at this stage, this bearing should slide out of the way. Now, this bearing is used and the shims on the back were used to just hold everything in place here so we may need to machine up a uh, spacer for here and to do that if we need to we'll just get the bearing height and we'll work from that but that should just pop out now they're usually a very loose fit there we go but see there's two bearings together and then And then this sits up the back there to, to support it all. So we'll probably have to build a spacer to come in behind here just to hold that forward where we need it. And you can see where the bearing here is collapsed at some stage and the gears chewed into the to the back there. But these are old tractors, so um, yeah, who knows what's been done. So we'll wind her over and we'll come to the front now and we'll remove the throw out bearing and all that end. Okay, we're around the bell housing end now. This is our main drive shaft. That can move back and forth now because we took that back, um, took that back bearing housing off. Now, we can undo these clips here. There's one each side and they're just to hold the throw out bearing on. We'll be replacing the throw out. Now this shaft here gets in the road, that's your main clutch engagement shaft. So it comes out of the way. This is the end of the selector rails here. So we can probably just rattle that off now. More glue. Oh, sorry, there's another bolt here I'd forgotten about. That should be better. And that's just a housing for the shafts to come up into. But you have a reverse lockout. So the lockout lets only one shaft at a time move. That's, had, that's been all hit up in there, eh? You can see it's had a bit of a bashing. But, um, but yeah, that shaft, this lockout here, it makes it so you only engage one shaft at a time, so you can't engage two gears. So we need to get that out of the way. Now, these bolts on the throwout fork, They need to be undone. Now we'll just use our trusty shifter. You just about rebuild the chamberlain with a hammer, a screwdriver, shifter, a pair of pliers and a half nine sixteen.
So they're tapered bolts, they just go up into the location, up into the shaft. And then they get wired off like you saw and that stops it turning. Then we should be able to extract this shaft. I need to, on the end here, I'll see if I can wheel it around a little. <coughs> on the end of this shaft here that goes to your transmission brake, there's a grub screw there, a little square headed grub screw. I need to undo that. Then that'll undo the end here. It'll undo the lever. I think we'll have to take this grease nipple out on this one too because of the shape of it and I think it'll be in the road. Gonna make us go all the way, this little fella. There we go. Now that should come off. And we'll put the screw straight back in there. There is a little detent for that screw to go into. Alright, let's swing this around again and see if we can <coughs> stay in frame for you. There we go. That's not too bad. Now there's where that little shaft went on the outside. like that might need a bit of a I see all the peen marks and where it's been ground and bashed and we go. So yeah, she's had a bit of a hard life, that shaft. Little bash marks. And... But anyway, we have spares, so we'll pick the best. Put this aside. And now we just got to pop these caps off here. So whoever had this apart had a good hammer and a big heap of elastic, I believe. There we go. That's a front needle bearing. That's an expensive little follow that bloke. This one does look good though. One of the other gearboxes we stripped, this was completely gone. The end of the shaft was toast. Now this front housing here 
It has jacking bolts. Should be one here, one there, one here. I like to use the longer bolts from out of the back plate. Once it starts, I should just, it'll probably just pop away. That should come away now. So, look at that, that seals him back to front. Huh. Yeah, that seal should have the spring side to the oil. So that's in back to front completely. Huh. Incredible. And now this here, that's our main shaft. So, I think from here, we'll go around the side, we'll undo the little square headed grub screws on the selector rails here, and we'll pull these selector rails out of the way. Well, you can see in the side of the gearbox here, and I'll just take the, those selector springs out. It's in pretty poor shape, this box. I don't know who's been working on it, but I think they should have their spanners removed. From their possession. <laughs> now there's a little screw here holding this fork to the shaft and there's one on the top here. The top here, well, I've undone the wire, they were both wired but this top one was loose, um, barely finger, well it wasn't even finger tied, I could, I could just undo it, no worries at all. And the bottom one Should I just crack him off with our little... Well, that wasn't very really tight either, so that's no problem though. So with those two screws out, we can draw these shafts out from the front now. Need my moldy. And as that comes out, I usually put the shaft straight back in so we're no mucking around later. That fork looks good. It's still tight on the boss here. Appears to be nothing wrong with that. Once again, the fork looks good. You can see where that's been loose at some stage. It's worn in. There's a lot of galling just here. Not sure what's going on there. Heap of rust pits there. So that's not for reuse. Now we just have the shafts left in there now. Now I 
think from memory this should all come out the back there's probably a little circlip in there I believe there it is so I'll bring you back around um, we should be able to undo the circlip here at the back of the shaft pull the bearing out and that should let this whole shaft come out the back leaving these gears here so we'll go around the back and undo that well it's on this shaft here we've just had a couple of detents drop but that's nothing we should be able to pop this circlip out like so and bump this shaft backwards with our alloy punch So now that's out, I should be able to support the gears in the box and just slide that back out. Now there is a spacer there, you have to remember that. This is your front bearing in a race, it looks really good on this one. And that bearing is held on there um, well, with, a, with a key and a lock nut, but instead of bashing that with a hammer like that we have a spanner for that. As the gears come out, we'll slide them back on the shaft. Look, that just saves mucking around later what goes where. Now yeah, there's one down. And I'll look down the end to get that one too. That one's a little bit firmer. So we'll put them up on the bench. And next cab off the rank, before we can move this shaft here forward, out of the way, we need to loosen this reverse idler shaft. So we'll go around there so I can show you a few things there. Okay, it's a little dark around this side, but to get the reverse idler out, the shaft was actually held in with this bolt here. Now, this bolt was loose, and I've just been able to do that with my fingers, and this may be some of the reason why it jumped out of reverse, but that's a homemade bolt, and this is the bolts that we got out of the other one. So, it's same but different. Um, this grinding here may not have been, oh sorry, that's what they're looking like now. This is the original one that should be in the box, this is the homemade one. So they've done a bit of a job on that, so whether they got that central or what happened there, who knows. But yeah, she's had a bodge up on that shaft, so we'll go around and we'll pop that out and chuck this in the bin. Okay, we're back around the side of the gearbox once more and we can see the top shaft here and we can see the reverse idler here and this top bearing won't clear the housing here or the gears there until we drop that shaft down so before we can proceed now we have to grab that reverse idler shaft pull that reverse idler backwards and let these gears here let them drop down so we can get at it so we'll grab our moldy grips give us something to hang onto the shaft with okay it's very easy to do and 
we should be able to just drop that down. Now there's thrust washers and needle bearings and all sorts of goodies there. So once again as we pull things out we just slide them back on. Put the thrust back on and that shiny surface there that is where the reverse oh sorry where the transmission brake comes and slows the gearbox down so we'll go and put this on the bench and now this shaft here will be able to come forward and come right out Okay, we'll get everything up on the bench. We'll run through. There's a bit of slop there. You can see a few worn teeth at the front there. But we'll pull everything apart and we'll pick the best parts and we'll set them out ready to go. Well, there you go. That's the end of the first part of this video. Um, just how to strip the 9G gearbox. Now, that gearbox was used in the 9G, the 6G, the C670, C6100, Kane Lander, and a lot of the early tractors had the same box, um, right up until they got to the 4080, 3380, 4080, and those tractors, then they changed to um, a hydraulic PDO pack and a few things like that. So, um, that'll do for that. That should give you a guide on how to strip your gearbox down. We have a pile of parts here. We're wringing wet. <laughs> it's, it's January, it's muggy as hell here at the moment. So we're wringing wet. Um, we've got a heap of parts to sort through. We won't bore you with washing the parts and all that sort of thing. This gearbox here with the nice Chamberlain embossed um, housing, that's the gearbox Paul wants to use. Um, that's fine. Um, I'd say it'd be a better gearbox than this other one anyway. This one seems to have been bashed about quite a little bit. So I suppose we'll tidy this housing up, clean all the gasket surfaces off, um, clean where the bearings go, sand all the bores, make sure that's good, all the threads are good. And then we'll work our way through all the parts. We won't bore you with that, but when we're ready to assemble, we'll come back and Hopefully we've got the best of a bad bunch and we give him a nice quiet gearbox to run up the road with and um, These could be a bit noisy usually in these Chamberlains It was the rear end that was noisy with the big bull gears and the range box These you could keep them reasonably quiet with good bearings um, Keep the preload. Oh, well, you don't preload them. Just take any movement out and um, You could get these running pretty quietly. So um, yeah, follow along. <laughs> we'll be back. It'll probably be a few days, but by we get back, but you'll think it's just just like that. <laughs> we'll catch you later, right? Eh?